1952, when Puerto Rico, the Commonwealth, was created by Congress, Puerto Rican residents do not pay U.S. federal income taxes. Last year, the government passed three laws, Law 20, 22, and 273. Which mean? Which mean that if you're a U.S. citizen and you move to Puerto Rico, you would pay 4% on earned income, zero on distributions and dividends, but only from Puerto Rico source income. So, so you've got to move your business there. You've got to move your business there. And that uh, is something that I think we're going to see a number of hedge fund people do. Uh, Puerto Rico is very livable. Uh, schools are good. Uh, it's an easy commute to New York and to, you know, Miami and Chicago. Barry, was the idea here uh, explicitly to turn Puerto Rico into an alternative to, say, the Caymans or perhaps Bermuda or Singapore. the Isle of Man or Guernsey, whatever the case may be? Singapore. Singapore, I an alternative to Singapore. That was the idea. But it is targeted very much at yeah. hedge funds. Hedge funds, private equity funds, et cetera. Uh, and uh, to bring these people down there, there's a very well-trained bi bilingual workforce and uh, great schools, private schools, parochial schools. Uh, so it, it can be very attractive. For was this companies. done in response to the fact that the Puerto Rican uh, economy is doing so poorly and they need a game plan here? One would think that the U.S. government and the, or the IRS would say, take a hike. Can't. Uh, the way the Commonwealth was set up, if you're a resident of Puerto Rico, which means you're there more than half the year, you don't pay federal taxes on income earned in Puerto Rico. The way, there's only two ways they can change that. One is make Puerto Rico the 51st state, which I don't think is in the cards for a very, very long time. Or to put enough pressure on the government of Puerto Rico to, you know, move these laws. And I don't see them doing that either. There are 4 million U.S. citizens who live in Puerto Rico, another 4 or 5 million Puerto Ricans who are stateside. And, you know, they need this uh, to grow their economy. Is this why you became a Puerto Rican resident this year? Yes. Yep, it is. So, He's walking besides the walk. yourself, <laughs> yeah. Barry, yeah. and John Paulson, whom we've been talking about, who hasn't, from what we understand, made a decision yet, but is looking, how much, how much momentum is there behind a this lot. effort to turn Puerto Rico into a, a, a tax, a lot, you know, a, a sort lot. of a tax haven for hedge funds? A lot. There have been a lot of private equity and hedge fund people down there looking. And they're looking at the housing, they're looking at the schooling. They're looking at the style of living. They're looking at what the workforce is there because they'll have to hire some people. Can I ask you a frank question? What yeah. do we make of a guy like, let's just use John Paulson as an example, right? He's born in New York City, mm -hmm. raised here, mm -hmm. gone to school in New York City. Made all his dough Right, here. so some people would argue that New York has made him what he is. What do you make of a guy who decamps for Puerto Rico and leaves his hometown behind and everything else that maybe some people feel he ought to give back to the city. Well, and not John in specific, any of these titans, well, really. I think John specifically, if I remember correctly, John donated $100 million to the Central Park and Service he did last year. So he's, he's done some pretty good giving back. Uh, you know, I think it's his legal right to do uh, what oh, he Oh, this to do. isn't a question about what's legally right. Think, it's about I, I what's think there's anything morally wrong. right, I, I guess. Think, I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it also. I would think that any of these hedge fund and private equity people will still have a significant presence in Manhattan, okay? Uh, you know, it's just a personal tax thing for these people. You have seen some people start to make the move? What we, kind of companies? We have. Hedge funds and private equity people. Have already made the move? Yes. How many do you need to really get the momentum going that this is going to be a movement, that we're going to say this is the new Cayman, this is the new Geneva? You need quite a few uh, because you really need to hire, you know, hundreds of people at, you know, very good paying jobs. And it's not, uh, <clears throat> it's not an easy thing for people to, to do. I mean, moving to Puerto Rico for people that are based in New York or Chicago or Washington or whatever, uh, you know, is not easy. Now, I've been there 17 years doing business there, and I don't speak two words of Spanish. But John Paulson does. He does. Uh, <laughs> but you don't need to speak Spanish to live there. Everybody speaks English. It's totally bilingual. Well, it may be a tough move, but I don't know. It was snowing here in New York City in March on Friday. Might not be the worst move in the I world. I was at the Puerto Rican PGA Golf Open Friday. It was 82, beautiful, sunny. <sighs> and I was in galoshes. All right, our special thanks to Barry Bremen.